All right, I, I just finished filming like a bunch of examples. I don't think I've ever filmed so many examples for one video, and it's because I love this topic. Also, do you guys like my little dad sunglass things? Uh, anyways, most of us know how to kind of place our subjects, get our settings right, make sure the lighting looks pretty decent, but a lot of people forget about the background. And now this isn't uh, a how to make your background look good video, but we're gonna talk about leading lines. But as you get better as a filmmaker, you start looking at more than just the thing that you're filming. You start looking at the whole image and what's going on in the background. How can you manipulate that background, that environment better to kind of draw the viewer's attention and just make it look cool? And I know I've talked about this one before, but I just think it's such a cool thing that you can do and it's so easy, doesn't cost you any money, anybody can do it pretty much at any time. Not only does it make your shots look super cinematic and really cool, but it plays a really vital role in leading the, the audience's attention to where you want them to be looking. So quick little recap, leading lines are a compositional technique where you're using lines in the background to direct the viewer's attention to your subject. Subject, hopefully. How do we find them? They're literally everywhere, like everywhere. Buildings, uh, wood, brick, uh, ceilings, roads, curbs, benches, paint on the ground. Anything can be a leading line. Even, even right now, I have some leading lines going on here. Leading lines are literally everywhere and it's really just a, a question of are you gonna use them or not. Even something like a pathway can be used as a leading line. They don't have to be perfect straight lines. So really, there's just so many options for this technique. But the big question is how the heck do you actually use them? Uh, it's actually fairly easy to find them, but it's a lot harder, I think, to use them and to use them well. But there's two things that you can keep in mind when you're looking at leading lines and how to use them. And the first one is depth, and the second one is pointing to your subject. And first, let's look at depth. So instead of just having a flat background, let's say it's a wall, instead of having just that wall being flat in the background, which still has kind of lines like, like this in the background right now, there's lines. All you have to do is kind of go off to the side a little bit and all of a sudden there's like all these lines that you can use to really build that depth in the image. You could use the lines just kind of flat, but with this way, when you go off to the side a little bit, you get this really nice perspective, this, this foreground, and background and just this sense of depth like like the image just keeps on going forever I just love how sharp the subject looks and then the background kind of just blurs off into the distance it's a really cool look and just looks cinematic in my opinion and notice here when, when you're looking at the wall flat you basically have no depth and as you start moving around to the side you're starting to get a lot of depth but then when you go too far, you kind of lose that depth again. You can't see the lines anymore and you're losing some of that depth. So you need to find kind of that sweet spot. And, and usually I find it somewhere around like 45 degrees or a little bit less when you're pointing at those lines kind of a little bit from the side. That's when you really get these nice lines that you can then use to build that depth in your image and it just looks incredible. And pro tip here, lens choice can really intensify or, or weaken these lines. So if you use something like a 16 mil, the lines are gonna be really like, like dramatic, almost overly dramatic. And then a 35 mil has this a little bit more subtle look. I, I think it looks a little bit better in these cases. And then if you use something like a zoom lens, you would actually kind of completely lose that depth with those lines. They would just kind of look like lines, but you wouldn't see that depth with a really zoomed in lens. So I prefer at around, you know, 24 to 35 mil. I think that's when the lines really shine and just look really cool. They're not overly dramatic and, and they're not too weak that you can't even see them anymore. So use those leading lines to get some really nice depth in your shots. And then number two, pointing to your subject. And this is probably the most important thing with leading lines. Now this doesn't mean that the lines have to stop and end at your subject. You can use lines in so many different ways to lead the viewer's attention. They can point, they can intersect your subject, or just kind of generally guide the viewer's attention to a certain direction where your subject is placed. And I guess the question is, what part of your subject do you point at? Do you point at the eyes or the face or, or at their body? And I don't think there's really a right or wrong answer here. You can pretty much do whatever you feel is right, but there are 
times when the line is a little bit too prominent, a little bit too strong and placing it somewhere like at the eye level, it can kind of look like there's a spike going through their eye and it kind of looks weird. So you need to watch out for that, but literally you can experiment and just try and see what works best for you. It's really gonna depend on your location, your environment, and also how you're placing your subject. But remember, the leading lines do not have to point exactly at your subject. They can just kind of guide the direction of where the viewer should be looking. And a lot of times, it's literally the difference between just a few steps or angling it a little bit different, going higher or lower. That can change dramatically the look of the lines and where they're pointing or how they're pointing at your subject or if they're pointing at your subject at all. As I was doing these examples, I was just finding lines everywhere. And then if I spent a little bit more time in a little spot, I was finding all these really cool ways to find lines and how to use them. So sometimes you just need to spend an extra minute and actually look around, find out what other cool shots you can do in that spot. And that's really where some of the magic comes out. And uh, yeah, some of my favorite shots were just, you know, I was kind of like, I, I don't know what else to shoot in this spot, but I'm gonna keep looking for some different angles. And I found some really cool ones like this one of Matt on the stairs. Um, I don't know, I just really like this shot, even though it's, it's just him sitting on these stairs. There's just something so satisfying about leading lines. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm OCD or something like that, but I just love how clean and nice they look. And not only do they make your footage look more cinematic, it creates that depth and it just points at your subject, which is the key thing in the end when you're doing your composition. So next time you're out filming, I really think you should look around, find those lines and figure out how you can use them to, to build that depth and point at your subject. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's gonna pay off. All right, I, I think we're on the same page now with leading lines. Um, I love them, you hopefully love them too. Uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and I'll, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. That wasn't so bad, right? Pretty easy.